So today we're going to address or to discuss the Jacobian. And this is going to be a pretty brief lecture, but the briefness of the lecture does not reflect the importance of the material. The Jacobian is one of the most important um, definitions in applied mathematics. It's what we've been building up to all this semester, more or less. And the Jacobian is a method for classifying fixed points. So in particular, we've already seen a method for classifying some fixed points in a very specific situation. We've looked at this equation, and we've said, well, zero, is a fixed point. And then we gave a kind of lengthy list of um, definitions that this fixed point could satisfy, as it were. It could be a, let me see if I can get them all. The fixed point could be a node or an improper node or a proper node or a saddle or a spiral or a center. And saddles are always unstable, and centers are always neutrally stable. But these other fixed points could be either unstable or asymptotically stable. Um, depending on the eigenvalues. Um, negative eigenvalues breed um, stability, positive eigenvalues breed instability. But of course, this is very specific. Um, this is a very specific type of differential equation. So we can't usually use this method. Or so you would think. The purpose of the Jacobian is to let us take all of the material we did Tuesday, all of the stuff on the lower right-hand side of the screen, and let us apply it to other systems and other fixed points. So you might actually have seen the definition of the Jacobian before. It's defined in calculus three, I believe. But if we have a system, an autonomous system, 
So we're not seeing T's in these equations on the right-hand side. Then the Jacobian is a matrix of partial derivatives. And this is the only place in this class that we use partial derivatives. Um, I think that this class doesn't even have calc to this three as a prereq. So I'll either teach this or remind you of it. But let me just write down, first of all, which partial derivatives go where. And now, um, before we talk about how the Jacobian can be used to um, study fixed points, as promised, the world's fastest lecture on partial derivatives. So partial derivatives occur When you have a function of more than one variable, let's just say two variables for our purposes. And we can take a partial derivative with respect to one of those variables. And we use a subscript to say which variable we are taking the partial derivative with respect to. Um, we don't use our prime notation. Notice that we don't have a prime there, for example. This subscript is telling us that we're taking the derivative. And what we mean when we say that we're taking the derivative with respect to x is that we're going to treat x as a variable. We're going to treat y as a constant. This derivative, this partial derivative is 2x plus y. Because we're treating y as a constant. Say that you have x squared plus a constant squared plus a constant times x. And you take the derivative. Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of a constant, 25 here, is 0. The derivative of a constant times x is the constant. So we're treating x as our variable and y as our constant. And if we now go up here and we look at these functions, there are four partial derivatives you could take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, the partial derivative of g with respect to x, and the partial derivative of g with respect to y. 
And we are taking those partial derivatives and we're putting them in this matrix, J the Jacobian. Now, so here is our major result of differential equations. Suppose we have this autonomous system and we have a fixed point of this autonomous system called X star, Y star. So, you know, maybe X star, Y star is over here. We are going to use this um, system. So we're going to use these equations and we're going to use this fixed point to create a matrix. J of X star, Y star. So remember that the Jacobian is a function because it's got functions inside it. The Jacobian is a matrix of functions. We could have written that here. So in many situations, not all situations, but many situations, what you can do is use this Jacobian to set up a linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients that therefore has a fixed point at the origin, zero comma zero. And we can classify the fixed point at the origin, its type and stability by looking at the Jacobian. What are its eigenvalues? What are its eigenvectors? We can classify the stability of the fixed point at the origin using this material we talked about on Tuesday, the stuff on the lower right of this frame. So maybe we find that the, um, that this fixed point at the origin is a saddle. So we're getting trajectories that look like this. That then tells us that this original fixed point is a saddle and we have trajectories near the fixed point that look like that. Or at least it frequently tells us that. This strategy does not always work, but we'll get into the nitty gritty, when does this work, when does this not work, in a moment. For now, to make sure we've sort of got the method nailed down, I would like to look at an example where this works. So I would like to look at the following system. Dx dt is x minus 2y times x 
dy dt is x minus 2 times y. Um, this system has multiple fixed points, but the fixed point I'd like to look at is 2 comma 1. Um, and this is a fixed point if we plug 2 and 1 into these derivatives. We do get that both the derivatives are zero. So, We've got our phase plane. We've got a fixed point. We'd like to investigate the stability of the fixed point using the Jacobian. So the first thing we need to do is find the Jacobian. And, um, each equation gives us a row. If you ever struggle to remember what goes where, that's probably the way to remember it. So we'll take the partial derivatives of this and we'll get our first row, and we'll take the partial derivatives of that and get our second row. And something I am going to do, because I think it's going to make taking the partial derivatives easier, is that I am going to distribute. So that first equation is x squared minus 2xy, that second equation is xy minus 2y. And now the Jacobian. So we'll start with the first row. So I'm looking at the partial derivatives of f. We'll start by treating x as a variable, y as a constant. So the derivative of the variable squared is twice the variable minus two times a constant times the variable minus two y. Now I'll treat y as the variable and x as the constant. So the a constant squared is still a constant. The derivative of x squared is zero minus two x minus two times a constant times the variable. The derivative is minus two times the constant. Um, if people are really struggling with these partial derivatives, just let me know. I'll find um, practice for you to do. Um, it, it's not a problem, but, but it is something we need to be able to do. So now the second row, we are working with the second derivative. So we'll start by treating x as a variable, y as a constant. Then we'll treat y as a variable, x as a constant. So we, um, we find the Jacobian, and the Jacobian is a function matrix. It's got x's and y's in it. 
But the next thing we'll do is take this point and plug it into the Jacobian. We're interested in the Jacobian at the fixed point. So four minus two is two, negative four, one, zero. And now we're going to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this. And it's going to tell us the type and the stability of this fixed point, that two comma zero. So two negative four, one zero. If we want the eigenvalues where putting lambdas down the diagonal and we um, we take the determinant, we get lambda squared minus two lambda plus five. Nothing mysterious going on here, I hope. The determinant of a two by two matrix is gotten by multiplying the diagonal, multiplying the anti-diagonal. Oh, something mysterious is going on, but it's not really mysterious. Your professor just uh, does nonsense sometimes. Sorry about that. So here is our characteristic polynomial. And to find the eigenvalues, we um, set this equal to zero. And we get, let's see, negative B. Here's A, here's B, here's C. I don't think this factors, so we'll just hit it with the quadratic form of a. Negative, negative two, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C. All divided by two times A. So we wind up with complex numbers. Four minus 16 is negative 12, all divided by two. So that's one plus or minus one half times i times the square root of 12. Um, and because this one is the important part, let's make sure we're on the same page. I am breaking the addition in the numerator up. And then I'm rewriting this so that it'll work. But when you have a complex eigenvalue and you're asking about stability, the real part is the part that matters. The real part can be greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero. And if it's greater than zero, that tells us that our fixed point is an unstable spiral. So near this fixed point, we have trajectories 
that look like this. And again, to try to make sure we're on the same page, what did we do here? We started with a system and a fixed point that we want to classify. Using the system and the fixed point, we generated the Jacobian at the fixed point. Then we said that the fixed point has the same height and stability as zero does in the linear differential equation x prime equals j times x. So we started with that original situation and that original fixed point. We created a new system. X prime equals JF. This new system has a fixed point at zero. Using the material from Tuesday, we know that the fixed point at zero is an unstable spiral. And that tells us that this fixed point is an unstable spiral. And that is the power of the Jacobian. Now, the Jacobian does have limits. Um, first of all, it doesn't always work. I've mentioned that a few times, and I will talk about what needs to happen for the Jacobian method to work. Um, but before I do that, I want to kind of make an observation that when you are looking at these linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients, the fixed point is giving what you might call universal behavior. Um, so say that, for example, this fixed point at zero is a proper node. 
This tells us that trajectories converge to zero in a straight line. And even if we start really far away from zero, even if we start way over here, we're going to obey the behavior that the fixed point dictates. We're going to go to zero. Well, if I have to draw a straight line that's longer than a few inches, they become curved lines. But what this is meant to show is convergence to zero on a straight line. So every condition goes to zero along a straight line. When we have these other systems, you know, systems like this, for example, and we have other fixed points, two comma one, the Jacobian only gives local behavior. So the Jacobian tells you what's going on near the fixed point. So in this example, we found that the fixed point is an unstable spiral and values near the fixed point are therefore doing the unstable spiral thing. And they're spiraling out. But they don't have to keep spiraling out forever. This only tells us what happens near the fixed point. So maybe, for example, in addition to that unstable spiral, Maybe we have an asymptotically stable fixed point over here. And instead of spiraling out forever, once we get far enough away from the first fixed point, maybe we converge to the, sec to the second fixed point. So near that fixed point, Point, we see the behavior of an unstable spiral, but once we get away from the fixed point, our trajectories can stop acting like that. All right, we've put it off for a while, not because it's super complicated, just because I wanted to get other stuff first. Um, when can we use a Jacobian to find the local behavior of a fixed point. Well, the answer is that the fixed point needs to be almost linear, which is an excellent example of just kicking the can down the road a bit 
because now the question becomes, okay, well, when is a fixed point almost linear? So to be almost linear, there are two conditions that must be satisfied. The fixed point must be isolated. And now that can just keeps uh, rolling down the street. Okay, new question, teacher. What's it mean for a fixed point to be isolated? It means you can draw a small circle around the fixed point. That does not contain any other fixed points. And I'll start by saying, often we have this sort of automatically. If there are only finitely many fixed points, they are automatically isolated. Because, I mean, if we have, say, three fixed points, Well, we can draw a little circle around the first, a little circle around the second, a little second around the third. So, but something that does show up fairly often is that you can have lines of fixed points. So this is not the most fascinating example, but it's hopefully a clear one. An example where we have fixed points that are not isolated, dx dt equals y minus two, dy dt also equals y minus two. Here, any point with a y coordinate of two makes both the um, dx dt and dy dt negative. So any point um, zero, sorry. So any point with a y-coordinate of two makes both dx dt and dy dt be zero and is therefore a fixed point. So if you look at the fixed points, 
there's not just one or two of them. There's an entire line of fixed points. And if you select a point on this line, and you draw a little circle around it, well, there are other fixed points in this circle. So we cannot use the Jacobian as a tool to study the fixed points of this differential equation. And that was condition one. To use the Jacobian to study a fixed point, the fixed point has to be isolated. And two, the Jacobian at the fixed point cannot have an eigenvalue of zero. And this is why um, in our lecture Tuesday, we looked at what happens when we have positive negative eigenvalues, and we looked at what happens when we have negative eigenvalues, but we didn't ask what happens if we have eigenvalues that are zero. Because if we have eigenvalues of zero, the Jacobian method fails, and we don't get any useful information. Um, so as an example, we'll go back to an example that we have looked at earlier today. dx dt equals x minus 2y times x dy dt is x minus two times y. Earlier this lecture, we looked at a fixed point and we found that um, this is an unstable spiral. Well, there's one other fixed point. Zero comma zero is a fixed point. Let's see if we can use the Jacobian to classify zero comma zero. Um, I'm scrolling back a bit because we already found the Jacobian, if I can only find it. Here we are. And now we'll plug in zero for X and zero for Y. And when we find the eigenvalues of this thing, we get zero minus uh, two, sorry, what am I, what, what did I mean to write here? I meant to write negative two minus lambda. So we multiply the diagonal elements, we multiply the anti-diagonal elements, Um, 
negative lambda and negative two minus lambda, and we subtract them, and we set that equal to zero. So we wind up with lambda times negative two minus that, negative two, he says, negative two minus lambda was correct, equals zero. And one of our eigenvalues here is a zero. And because that eigenvalue is zero, the Jacobian method fails, and we cannot classify that fixed point using the Jacobian. So the Jacobian doesn't always work, but a very powerful tool. We'll be using it um, in a few of the next sections we do. Um, so we're moving on into the applications um, part of this course. I'm very excited. This is some of my favorite material to teach in, um, in all of the courses that I, that I do teach. Um, but for now, I hope that everybody has a lovely long weekend.